Hello, I'm Heather Mills McCartney. For many years I've been involved with the United Nations in the fight against landmines. You're about to see a film about a group of dogs who work for the same cause, but on the front line, to rid the world of landmines. These dogs are specially trained to find landmines, those insidious weapons that lie hidden just under the ground waiting to destroy the life of an innocent victim. These weapons kill and maim, but they also create refugees. But thanks to these incredible dogs of peace, millions of lives will be saved. This is their story. Afghanistan, a land of camels and nomads, of farmers and merchants, a place where animal companions like dogs and cats are rare. Until recently, the people of this country have had little to do with man's best friend. But attitudes towards animal companions are starting to change. From the evil of a 20-year war, a newfound respect and affection for the canine is emerging that is set to help change the way this nation has been thinking for more than a thousand years. This newfound affection is born from a group of dogs who are helping to save Afghanistan from starvation, from death. From a life tainted with terror and destruction, these dogs are heroes. These dogs are the dogs of peace. Jamie is a German Shepherd puppy who, at just eight weeks old, has been chosen to train for a special job. A dangerous job that only a few can master. Like Sonny, who has been trained to sniff out death, to sniff out deadly landmines, weapons, which are buried just below the surface of the landscape. Danny also finds these bombs hidden underground, bombs that every day kill and maim men, women and children in more than 60 countries around the world. But Jamie has a long way to go before he can be called a landmine detection dog. The Islamic State of Afghanistan is a desert landscape sandwiched between Iran in the west, Pakistan to the east and south, and the former Soviet Union to its north. It's an ancient center of romantic and deadly intrigue. Of fiercely proud warriors and nomadic camel trains who much of the world had forgotten about until September 11, 2001. The people of Afghanistan were innocent victims of religious fanaticism, the same fanaticism which led to the bombing of the World Trade Center. After the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in the late 1970s, Life for the Afghan people would never be the same again. During that period of Soviet occupation, minefields were laid all over the country. Eventually, the Afghans fought back, 
and they succeeded in expelling the Russians. In the result in Malay, the country was taken over by religious fundamentalists known as the Taliban, who ruled Afghanistan with an iron fist. A rule which ironically ended after the act of terror against the United States by the Taliban's allies, Al-Qaeda. The civil war in Afghanistan may be over, but the war against terror continues. A war against smaller, more insidious weapons. Weapons that lie in wait to kill or maim. The terror doesn't sneak unexpectedly out of the sky as it did for New York, Washington and Pennsylvania on that September 11th, but sneaks indiscriminately out of the ground. These weapons stop small children from playing safely. They prevent older children from going to school. And adults can't safely shop in the marketplace. The war against terror in this country isn't against weapons of mass destruction, but against weapons whose mission it is to destroy the individual. Weapons that lie in wait to kill the unwary, the innocent. And that's where the Dogs of Peace come in. Their mission is to find approximately 10 million landmines scattered throughout Afghanistan. This is the Dog Demining Training Center in Kabul. The training center is on a hill that was once a major battlefield. It took 20 trucks to remove the landmines, exploded and unexploded bombs that were found here. But today it is home to more than 100 dogs, including Jamie, all training to become dogs of peace. At two months old, Jamie has a long road ahead of him if he is to stay on this course. Very good. Very nice. Specialist trainers will teach Jamie the essentials of landmine detection. It will be more than a year before he meets his handler and forms a lifelong bond. A bond like Kerry and his handler Sham Zulak are developing. As unbelievable as it may seem to Western culture, this is the first time in his life that Sham Zulak has had a relationship with a dog. I am Dipakman, Kabul. I am Shams Ulak. I am 24 years old and okay. I am from Kabul. This My dog is a German Shepherd called Kerry. He is a very smart dog and I love him. We are friends and together we are going to make Afghanistan safe for the children. I love you, dog. Sham Zulak was a refugee living in Pakistan. He returned to Afghanistan after American troops defeated the Taliban. I'm so pleased to be back in my country and to be working with these fantastic dogs. Taliban's never allowed us to be friends with dogs. It was against their beliefs, but now it is different. And Kerry is my best friend and I love my dog. Another trainee at the dog training center is Rahimullah. I am Rahimullah. I fought with the Mujahideen against the Russians. But when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, I took my family to Pakistan. After September 11, I returned, and now I am fighting a new war, a holy jihad against landmines. I have four children still in Pakistan. Soon they will join me here. But first, Anthony and me will clear my country of landmines. Another trainee is Mirawis. 
I am Mirwais. I am 21 years old. I am very new to this. All my life my country has been at war. I am too young to have fought for my country. But being a landmine dog handler, I can fight in the war against the terror of landmines. I have never met a dog before I came here. I'm still getting to know a land, but I think he likes me. I know I like him. I know I trust him. These dogs have been training for 15 months, 12 months on their own and then three months with their handlers. They are almost ready to take their final tests together before graduation. Once they graduate, they will be out in the fields, villages and cities of Afghanistan, clearing the land of mines inch by inch. Places like Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, or what's left of it, Almost every street, every playing field, every park was infested with landmines. After more than 20 years of war, there isn't a building that doesn't bear a scar or worse. This was the King's Palace, the Russian Embassy, an elementary school classroom. After 20 years of war, there isn't a person in Afghanistan who doesn't know of someone who has been killed or injured in the fighting. Though a relative peace seems to have returned, it is routinely shattered by the sound of explosions. as another innocent victim unwittingly steps on one of many different types of landmines. The terror of landmines doesn't only exist in Afghanistan, there are landmines in more than 60 countries around the world. Mines come in many shapes and sizes, some big enough to blow up a tank, others designed to spring out of the ground and spray victims with razor blades and others drop from aircraft that look like toys and attract children. All have the same devastating effect. They maim, they kill, and they create refugees. It's not easy learning to become a landmine detection dog or dog handler. There are many obstacles and challenges to overcome. Fortunately, there are experts from the West who have been sent to help. New Zealander Ian McLean works for the Geneva Centre for Humanitarian Demining and is a mine clearance specialist. He's in Afghanistan to help train the dog demining teams and teach landmine clearance techniques. The future of Afghanistan depends on mine clearance. There are huge areas of land that are important, high priority areas of land for use for agriculture, for use for resettlement of refugees. Those areas are still contaminated with mines. Ian trained as an animal behaviorist. He understands how dogs think and is particularly skilled at training mine sniffing dogs. We know dogs are an extremely effective detection tool and they give clearance rates that are higher in most cases than any other clearance system. He says Shamzulak, Meruis, Rahimullah and the other men and dogs at the training centre have a tough road ahead of them. But once they graduate, they will swell the dogs of peace number in Afghanistan past the 200 mark. They will be out in the minefields of Afghanistan along with Sonny and Danny as full-fledged mine detection dogs, sniffing out these instruments of death. You can think of the mine as a kind of a predator. And there are many different kinds of predator. Mines are the most effective sit and wait predator that you will ever find. The reason is that they are patient forever. They are prepared to wait for the arrival of their prey for years if necessary. Once the prey arrives, they can respond instantly. You have no tactical response options. It's a pure and perfect sit and wait predator available to take you out at any moment.
Working under the most difficult conditions day after day, six days a week, these dogs of peace are the elite of the world's working dogs. Every day all over the world, working dogs are seeking out drugs, chemicals and explosives at airports and post offices. Then there are the rescue dogs that find the survivors of earthquakes or landslides or other disasters. But the dogs of peace are unique among working dogs. They are the special forces of the dog world. Every day their lives and the lives of their handlers are on the line as they search out these deadly landmines. these dogs of peace are also bringing hope to a new generation of Afghan children. A generation of children who've been prisoners of fear, fear of being killed by landmines as they play innocently. Just a game of tag, catch or baseball can be deadly here. These dogs are also building bridges that are reaching out to this new generation they may break a mold that has been in place for thousands of years. For 10 years, Afghanistan has been fighting a cold, hard war against landmines. It has been extremely successful so far, but with another 10 million mines in the ground, it's probably going to take the dogs of peace at least another seven years to clear the land completely. Yeah. The Afghan dogs of peace are now specially bred to sniff for mines. It makes them better sniffers and more successful. Young Jamie is the only puppy of his age going through the dog demining school at the moment. However, there are eight other younger puppies close behind him. Some of these men are former freedom fighters, the Mujahideen. They have some horrific stories of war to tell, but working with these dogs is having an amazing effect on them. Not only will these dogs save individuals by uncovering landmines when they grow up, but they are already helping many of these former men of war. For 20 years, some of these men have faced the horrors of war. Now, these little puppies are having a therapeutic effect on the men by psychologically helping them come to terms with a life without combat. <laughs> Ironically, Islam, the religion of the handlers, does not encourage such closeness between man and dog. According to many teachers of the Muslim Bible, the Quran, dogs are to be treated like pigs, saying they're unclean and should not be kept as pets. The Quran does recognize that dogs can be workers, but it teaches that if a Muslim has to work with a dog, then special clothes must be worn, and when the work is done, the worker has to wash himself thoroughly. While these handlers are keen to observe the rules of Islam, their contact with the animals is turning into genuine affection. As well as helping former fighters, these little puppies are inspiring a new generation of Afghan children. Because there are no pets, only working animals in Afghanistan, children are not quite sure what to do when they have a close encounter with a puppy. For these children, this puppy may as well be an alien. They simply don't know how to respond. At first, they shy away, afraid of a puppy that most children would immediately want to embrace. For Faisal and Zahid, this is the first time they've had a chance to play with a puppy. Though they are no longer fearful, they seem a little awkward. Hmm. 
These two boys are among other things victims of landmines. People bury them under the ground and you can't see them once you step on them, it will explode. To look at them you wouldn't think so. They have all their limbs, their fingers, their eyes, but they are victims of landmines because you see landmines not only kill and maim, they create refugees. They told us that the life in cover was beautiful because your next door neighbor and all the other people were your relatives and friends and like you could go over their house and like have a cup of tea or something. And then when the war started, everyone had to like separate and go to other countries and now the people hardly see each other in years. The threat of landmines have displaced these people. They have created refugees the same refugees that flood into Pakistan and then made their way to Britain, Australia, France, Germany, Canada and the USA, all seeking a safe place to live. This is why the dogs of peace are so important to the future of Afghanistan. They have to clear thousands of square miles of countryside so that these refugees, these displaced people, can return. It's this reason why Mirawis, Rahimullah and Shamzulak have decided to work with the Dogs of Peace hey, yes. to clear Afghanistan of landmines so the millions of refugees can return home. The dogs start yeah. their training at around 8 to 10 weeks old about the same age as Jamie. But it takes a long time for these special skills to be learned. The man who works with the puppies is Bismullah, a former dog handler who lost his dog and an eye to a landmine. There are three things that make a good landmine detection dog. They must learn to recognize the smell of TNT. They must be obedient, and strangely enough, they must like to play. No, no, no. The secret to training a substance-sniffing dog is to make it obsessive. Not for the substance, of course, but for something else. And what better device to make the dogs obsess over than fun? In this case, the fun comes in the shape of a rubber ball. It's a conditioning system. It uses standard psychological theoretical principles in order to yeah. produce this detection tool. That yeah. ball becomes the focal point of its life and getting that ball into its mouth is the most important thing for that dog. Once you have that, you have a tool, a teaching tool, to create other kinds of behaviours. And although for the dog it becomes a game, for the trainer it's a serious business. Jamie begins his ball obsession training. He's put in a cage for five minutes at a time and watches the other dogs at play. He sees the fun the dogs are having and wants to join in. After a while, he's given the opportunity to play with a ball. He will eventually realize this is a reward for something he has done. He just has to make the connection. Although the most important thing for selecting a landmine detection dog is for the dog to enjoy playing, once the dog has been chosen, the emphasis shifts. From an operational point of view, the essential elements are the ability to detect TNT and the discipline to work in a highly structured way. These dogs must learn to respond passively to the smell of TNT. To react otherwise could be fatal. 
Rahi Muller is working with his dog Anthony. As they build trust in one another, Rahi Muller is being taught that he must make Anthony work a straight line. This is so that he can have confidence that the area has been properly cleared and no mines have been missed. Meanwhile, Anthony is learning to connect the smell of TNT with receiving a ball as a reward. TNT is hidden and each time Anthony finds it, he gets rewarded with the ball. Come on, come on, no, come on, my, come on. But how does the dog's nose know what it knows? Animal behaviorist Ian McLean says that dogs can easily distinguish the many scents that fill the air. They can easily tell the difference between the smells of pollens and plants or between rubber and food. They are especially sensitive to the smell of TNT. You can think of a mine as a signal device, signaling device. The mine is sending signals into the world and the dog is a detector. And the detection is done through the dog's nose or olfactory system as it's called, which is between 40 and 100 times more sensitive than yours or mine. This is because the part of the human brain that is used to decode smells is just half a square inch, whereas a dog's brain uses 20 square inches to decode the same information. Not only can a dog sniff many smells, it can separate them, something humans can't do. What the dog does is it actually sends out humid air, moist air, onto the ground by breathing outwards. It then pulls that moist air back in again. And the moist air appears to release the molecules of TNT or explosive, mine, mine signals, from the dust where it's sitting on the surface. The dog can then pull those odors back in and then you get the processing system, the, uh, the interior of the nose, has a signaling pathway, the signaling pathway moves up to the brain, the brain has been trained as a detection tool, the dog thinks, oh my goodness, ball, and we've won the game. The dogs have to instinctively associate TNT with fun. It's the knowledge that the dog knows he will get his reward for finding the odor of TNT that gives the men the trust in their dogs that they need. It is also important for the trainers to test wind direction. In order for the dogs to catch the smell of TNT, the wind has to be blowing towards them. This ensures the dogs get a clear smell of everything that is in the air. While Rahimullah is learning to do this, Shams is teaching Kerry to be obedient. This is the most important lesson of all because if the handler can't control his dog, then they simply can't be trusted in a live minefield. And this is what instructor and landmine detection veteran Abdul Jabbar is telling them. Before he became a demining instructor, he was a dog handler like Shams hopes to be. Together with his dog, he found more than 250 landmines. The men speak to their dogs in numerous languages, in English, in German, this means stay, and of course Afghani. But it is all the same in the end, to ensure they have maximum obedience from their dog. Eventually, Kerry will become like these dogs who are on the front line against the unseen enemy. These dogs are in the danger zone. Danny and his handler Mohammed Asif, and Sonny and his handler Mohammed Hanif, are up there with the best of them when it comes to effective landmine detection. Today, Sonny and Danny are working a minefield less than a mile from the outskirts of Kabul. The minefield is surrounded by accidents waiting to happen. On one side, a road frequented by traffic of all kinds. 
On the other side, open land, trodden by goats, mules and Gucci's, the nomadic people of Afghanistan who have wandered this land endlessly. Danny and Sonny are part of Demining Group 10. Along with the rest of the group, they begin their work at 6.30 every morning. For the men, it's another day of looking death in the face as they hunt out the deadly landmines. For the dogs, one wrong step and it could be disastrous. But for them, it's another day of playing a great game of ball. Albeit in the valley of death. While modern landmines are largely made out of plastic, metal detectors can find them. However, the dogs are more effective because with their amazing sense of smell and their ability to concentrate, they don't miss a single mine. Sonny and Danny's challenge today is to clear a block the size of a basketball court. With luck, their handlers will be able to declare the area safe. It's only 9 a.m. and already the temperature is approaching 36 degrees. The dogs have to be given water every 10 minutes to prevent dehydration. In a few hours it will be pushing 40 degrees. At nose level, the ground temperature will be a scorching 55 degrees. Then it will be too hot for the dogs to continue, and they will have to stop. But in the meantime, the dogs work on in earnest. The dogs' feet will be getting hot, but a cooling northerly breeze, which blows dust around, keeps their noses cool. The wind is an important feature for the dogs because it cools them, whereas in the desert environment the, the temperature is overheating them. On a day like this, we're about 35 degrees, there's no problem for the dog as long as there's a little bit of wind, they can work for up to 20 minutes uh, without difficulty. If that wind drops, they can immediately start to overheat. At 35 degrees, uh, 11.30 in the morning, the ground temperature is over 50 degrees and that's interfering with the ability of the nose to function and also you can actually see them raising their feet because uh, of the heat from the soil. The handlers make the dogs search up and down along the straight line that marks the danger zone. As the day slips by, more and more land is cleared without an indication of anything lurking below the surface. But there are so many landmines in this country, it won't be much longer before one of the dogs finds something. As the temperature rises, Danny is getting hot under the collar and a little frustrated. He catches a trace of TNT in the air and immediately scratches the ground to bring up the smell. This is extremely dangerous, as the pressure of his paws on a landmine could be just enough to set it off. Generally speaking, if he was to step on a landmine, his weight wouldn't normally set it off, but pouring the ground to get a better scent is another matter. The extra pressure on the ground could be just enough to detonate the mine. But this forbidden behavior has worked. Suddenly, he hones in on one spot. Perhaps his scratching has found something. Danny's handler, Mohammed Asif, knows something is up. Suddenly, Danny sits and faces Mohammed Asif. 
It's the sign that he has found something. Is it a landmine or an unexploded bomb? The tension is high. Danny has detected the smell of TNT. He sits riveted to the spot. He knows if he moves before he is called, he won't get his reward. The ball will stay in Mohammed Asif's pocket. This is the most dangerous time for the dogs. There's no room for mistakes. Over the past 10 years, four dogs have been killed by landmines. Danny eyeballs his handler, looking for the instant he calls him to get his reward. The dogs are taught this passive response to react in a calm, cool way. One thing the handlers can't afford is for the dogs to get excited. The handler must have total control. Both he and his dog's life depends on it. Once Mohammed Asif is sure he has the dog's full attention, he drops his arm. Daddy, come. Somewhere in this vicinity is a landmine that could contain as much as six kilos of TNT, enough to blow a tank to smithereens. Now it's the turn of the manual deminer to defuse the mine and kill it before it kills. His first job is to identify whether it is a mine or a harmless piece of shrapnel. To do that, he delicately clears the soil around it and takes a first look. His next job is to destroy it. Very carefully, he places explosive charges next to it. Moves a safe distance away and the mine is blown up. These men and these dogs are unquestionably heroes. Every minute of their working day, they literally look death in the eyes as they think of the children, the women, and the men who've been killed or maimed, and the refugees, the people who can't safely go outside their homes. <laughs> Anyone can make a mistake. The problem with demining, your first mistake is probably your last. We never know if we will be going home at the end of the day. And while the manual deminer is dicing with death, at the dog training center there is concern. One of the trainee dogs has found something suspicious. Has he sniffed TNT? It could be a bomb, but it turns out to be just shrapnel, the remains of a bomb. Good. The smell of TNT from the bomb still lingers in the air. Despite the alarm, it is a good sign that the dog knows what he is looking for. TNT has a very strong smell. It's not going less after, after using or after environment. It's, it's have continuously the same smell. This smell is able to, to come through plastic cases, it's coming through glass, it's coming through uh, water. Right, this mine below for This years. is Mario Bo. He's a two technical advisor to the incident. training center. Yeah. He began his training career with the former East German Army and has been sent out by the German government who fund the demining project. He is the only foreigner in the 1100 strong Afghan demining force. In charge of training is Zanadine. On the other side. Along with Mario, it is his job to decide which dogs are sufficiently Tree trained to, to safely yeah. sniff for landmines. He is a former Mujahideen freedom fighter who fought the Russians during Afghanistan's war of liberation. Along with Mario, he is preparing a test minefield to see which dogs are good enough to join the dogs of peace. You know, our job is very important. Uh, to help the people. It's very difficult to train the dogs. It's not easy for the people to work with the dogs. Okay. 
For these men and dogs, their partnership must be total. They have to trust one another completely if they are both to survive the challenges ahead. It has been many weeks since Sham Zulak was teamed with Kerry, Rahimula with Anthony, and Miruis with Alan. They are all learning together, and the bonds between handler and dog are clearly evident. I am feeling so much more comfortable working with Anthony. I think I trust him more than ever. In fact, I think I can trust him almost more than I can trust some people. I can't wait to get out in the field to start to clear Afghanistan of landmines. The sooner the job is done, the sooner we can start living normal lives again. Kerry is going to be the best demining dog ever. I am so proud of my dog, but I must admit I do have problems controlling him. These men and their dogs are just three of around 50 teams waiting to graduate. Live it. Come. All are doing well, but all have the same weakness, obedience. All three of the potential graduates are having trouble controlling this aspect of training. You are the leader of this team, not the dog. Okay. Sometimes Kerry obeys Sham Zulak's every command instantly. At other times, Kerry just can't concentrate. Much as he loves his dog, Shams knows he could be a liability. Uh, he stepped over several times and maybe by his weight he could explode it because it's a personal mind. Mario and Zanadine won't let him graduate. Sham Zulak has to work on obedience. It will be another two weeks before he can have another shot at graduating. Rahimullah too is not allowed to graduate for exactly the same reason. Anthony is not yet responding perfectly when working with Rahimullah and only completely reliable behavior can be allowed in a minefield. For Zanadine and Mario, it is better to be safe than sorry. But it seems as though Mirawis may just get through. He has done well and only has one last test left. A simple obedience test. But something is wrong. For some reason, Alan won't do as he is told. And the result could be that he and Mirawis will also fail. Plus by one dog from, from, from 6.30 up to now is still too so Mario takes over. He knows what the trouble is. Wait, wait. The temperature is affecting Alan's concentration. Will this be a reason to fail dog and handler? A new day in Afghanistan and the fragile peace continues. Word about the heroic work of the Dogs of Peace is spreading. Faisal and Zahid, the refugees we met earlier, have decided that they want to become dog handlers and work with these amazing dogs. Yeah, I'd love to be a dog handler because I'm helping my own people in my own country to have fun and be safe wherever they're going and they can't hurt themselves. I would love to become a dog handler because you're, you're saving other people's lives and people will love you. But it'll take more than the dreams and enthusiasm of two young boys to help rebuild Afghanistan.
dog needs a command. Meanwhile, at the Mind Dog Training Center, Zanadine and Mario have decided to give Mirowis and Alan a second chance to graduate. If Mirowis can control Alan the way he is supposed to, before Alan got too hot and ran off to find some shade under a tree, they will be allowed to join the Dogs of Peace. And this one last chance is symbolic of Afghanistan's current plight. Before the US and its allies went into Afghanistan to flush out Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda, Afghanistan had become a safe haven for terrorists. Today, those terrorists have been kicked out, locked up, in hiding or on the run, allowing the dogs of peace to do their job better. But the people of Afghanistan say the people of the world must be vigilant. They say this is Afghanistan's last chance and the rest of the world must support it. Because if the world doesn't support Afghanistan, then the Taliban and Al-Qaeda will return and the retribution will be terrible for both Afghanistan and the rest of the world. This is now Afghanistan's chance to make its land safe again. Safe for the Guchis, the nomadic people of Afghanistan. Safe for the farmers and merchants, and safe for refugees to return. And safe again for the children of Afghanistan to play, walk to school, and live life without fear. For the handlers and the children, the dogs of peace are not only heroes, they are now friends. And it is this that drives Mirowis and the rest of the trainee dogs of peace. The last chance given to Mirowis and Alan has paid off. Mirowis was able to control Alan the way he is supposed to. To their delight, they have passed the final test and can now join the Dogs of Peace with pride. It may take another seven years for Mirowis, Allen and the Dogs of Peace to find the 10 million or so landmines hidden in Afghanistan. But with the training they had, they are up to the challenge to help make the country safe again. the dogs of peace. So for Afghanistan, the future is looking bright. The dogs of peace do a fantastic job. With so many landmines still to be cleared, not only in Afghanistan, but in so many other countries, we have to do all we can to support them. The world is a dangerous place, but with support, the dogs of peace are making it safer. I'm Heather Mills McCartney. Thanks for watching. Attitudes towards animal companions are starting to change.
From the evil of a 20-year war, a newfound respect and affection for the canine is emerging that is set to help change the way this nation has been thinking for more than a thousand years. This newfound affection is born from a group of dogs who are helping to save Afghanistan from starvation, from death. From a life tainted with terror and destruction. These dogs are heroes. These dogs are the dogs of peace. Jamie is a German Shepherd puppy who, at just eight weeks old, has been chosen to train for a special job. A dangerous job that only a few can master. Like Sonny, who has been trained to sniff out death, to sniff out deadly landmines, weapons, which are buried just below the surface of the landscape. Danny also finds these bombs hidden underground, bombs that every day kill and maim men, women, Hello, I'm Heather Mills McCartney. For many years I've been involved with the United Nations in the fight against landmines. You're about to see a film about a group of dogs who work for the same cause, but on the front line, to rid the world of landmines. These dogs are specially trained to find landmines, those insidious weapons that lie hidden just under the ground waiting to destroy the life of an innocent victim. These weapons kill and maim, but they also create refugees. But thanks to these incredible dogs of peace, millions of lives will be saved. This is their story. Afghanistan, a land of camels and nomads, of farmers and merchants, a place where animal companions like dogs and cats are rare. Until recently, the people of this country have had little to do with man's best friend. But at women and children in more than 60 countries around the world. But Jamie has a long way to go before he can be called a landmine detection dog. The Islamic State of Afghanistan is a desert landscape sandwiched between Iran in the west, Pakistan to the east and south, and the former Soviet Union to its north. It's an ancient center of romantic and deadly intrigue. Of fiercely proud warriors in nomadic camel trains who much of the world had forgotten about until September 11th, 2001. The people of Afghanistan were innocent victims of religious fanaticism, the same fanaticism which led to the bombing of the World Trade Center. After the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in the late 1970s, Life for the Afghan people would never be the same again. During that period of Soviet occupation, minefields were laid all over the country. Eventually, the Afghans fought back and they succeeded in expelling the Russians. 
In the result in Malay, the country was taken over by religious fundamentalists known as the Taliban, who ruled Afghanistan with an iron fist. A rule which ironically ended after the act of terror against the United States by the Taliban's allies, Al-Qaeda. The civil war in Afghanistan may be over, but the war against terror continues. A war against smaller, more insidious weapons. Weapons that lie in wait to kill or maim. The terror doesn't sneak unexpectedly out of the sky as it did for New York, Washington and Pennsylvania on that September 11th, but sneaks indiscriminately out of the ground. These weapons stop small children from playing safely. They prevent older children from going to school. And adults can't safely shop in the marketplace. The war against terror in this country isn't against weapons of mass destruction, but against weapons whose mission it is to destroy the individual. Weapons that lie in wait to kill the unwary, the innocent. And that's where the Dogs of Peace come in. Their mission is to find approximately 10 million landmines scattered throughout Afghanistan. This is the Dog Demining Training Center in Kabul. The training center is on a hill that was once a major battlefield. It took 20 trucks to remove the landmines, exploded and unexploded bombs that were found here. But today it is home to more than 100 dogs, including Jamie, all training to become dogs of peace. At two months old, Jamie has a long road ahead of him if he is to stay on this course. Very good. Very nice. Specialist trainers will teach Jamie the essentials of landmine detection. It will be more than a year before he meets his handler and forms a lifelong bond. A bond like Kerry and his handler Sham Zulak are developing. As unbelievable as it may seem to Western culture, this is the first time in his life that Sham Zulak has had a relationship with a dog. I am Dipakman, Kabul. I am Shams Ulak. I am 24 years old and okay. I am from Kabul. This My dog is a German Shepherd called Kerry. He is a very smart dog and I love him. We are friends and together we are going to make Afghanistan safe for the children. I love you, dog. Sham Zulak was a refugee living in Pakistan. He returned to Afghanistan after American troops defeated the Taliban.